Johnny Talk Sports in with the week seven NFL predictions. Last week I only went eight and six, which is my worst record of the season. Hopefully I can bounce back this week. Before I get to my picks this week, I do want to say that if you want to check out my World Series prediction video, I'll put the link to that in the description box down below, as well as my college football predictions for the week. Both of those will be in the description box. So if you want to check those out, go on ahead. Now, without further ado, let's get to the Week 7 NFL predictions. We will start off, as always, with Thursday Night Football. And this week, Thursday Night Football features the Giants and the Eagles. And really, Thursday Night Football is just really kind of disappointing in general. I kind of had better hopes for all the Thursday Night games going into the season. And out of all the Thursday night football games we've had, we've probably had maybe, I don't know, maybe one good one. Hopefully this is going to be a good one. NFC East battle, even though really none of the NFC East teams, they look like they're even ready for the playoffs. Despite one of the four teams in this division getting into the playoffs. You know, both of these teams... Despite not having a good record at all, despite only winning one game this year on each side, at least, at least, they have really put in an effort this season. And I'm going to go with the Eagles, because even though the Eagles, they're on a two-game losing streak right now, I at least like the fight that the Eagles have tried to put on. In the last two weeks, they played Pittsburgh really tough, a 5-0 and Pittsburgh team. They also fought all the way back against the Ravens, but they fell just short. So I'm going to pick the Eagles in this one, although I am concerned about the Eagles secondary in this matchup. Slayton may have a good night, as could possibly Golden Tate. But I'm going to pick Philadelphia in this game, despite them being down a few players Zach Ertz, Miles Sanders, not playing this week. In fact, Ertz is going to be out for three to four weeks. I still think the Eagles can get it done. Because Travis Fulgham has really stepped up in the Eagles passing game for the last handful of games. So I like Fulgham to be a difference maker this week. So I'm going to pick the Eagles to win this Thursday night showdown. On to the Sunday games. We have the Lions and the Falcons. The Falcons picked up their first win of the season with new interim head coach Raheem Morris. Well, the Lions, they picked up a win against the Jaguars. I said last week, with Julio Jones returning to the Falcons lineup, the Falcons offense is going to look a lot better than it has been in the last couple of weeks. And it showed. I mean, I know it's just the Vikings, but the Vikings almost beat the Seahawks. I think the Vikings are kind of an underrated team. I think that they're... 1-5 and five record, I don't think it defines the Vikings as a team. I think they had they had a close one against Seattle. I just think that Minnesota, I think they're going to get a lot better in the years to come. I think if they can get another quarterback, because I don't think Kirk Cousins is honestly cutting it. Kirk Cousins ultimately could get benched at some point in this season if the interceptions continue. For the Lions... I said in the beginning of the season that this was a prove-it year for Matthew Stafford. And interestingly enough, I think this is a battle of quarterbacks that it's either prove it or get out. And I know a lot of Falcons fans, I mean, including myself, I've been saying that Matt Ryan, I think it's time to move on from him. But I just think that the Falcons will somehow win this game. I think the Falcons will make it two in a row. It seems like every time the Falcons, every time they get off to a bad start this season and when there's really nothing to play for, they seem to start winning games. And I like that trying to continue. Although, as bad as the Falcons' defense is, I do anticipate Kenny Galladay having a good game for this Lions offense. But I'll pick the Falcons to win this one. But I think it's going to be in the neighborhood of possibly... 35-34, a, literally a one-point victory for the Falcons. I think possibly the Lions will score a touchdown. 
in the last couple of seconds in the game. They'll go for two, and they won't get it. So Falcons pick up a 35-34 victory. Next, we have the Browns and the Bengals. Now, this is, is the second time they faced each other this season. They faced each other on Thursday Night Football back in Week 2, and the Browns picked up the win. Now, what's different about this matchup, Nick Chubb dominated the game for the Browns' offense, and now Nick Chubb is on IR. And I think that's going to be playing into the benefit of the Bengals with Nick Chubb not being in the lineup. Still got Kareem Hunt for the Browns' offense. And Baker Mayfield, he has some bruised ribs. I don't know. I think this game could go either way. I just can't really see the Browns playing bad two weeks in a row. It seems like when the Browns play teams that aren't the Steelers or the Ravens, the Browns are like one of the best offenses in the league. Especially when Odell Beckham is more involved in the offense. Now I think they're going to involve Odell Beckham in the offense this week, and I think they're going to dominate the Bengals. I think the Bengals could keep it close, but I just can't see it. I think the Browns, I think they're hungry for the win this week after being embarrassed last week. So I'm going to pick the Browns to win this matchup. Moving on next to the battle of 5-0 teams, the Pittsburgh Steelers and the Tennessee Titans. Battle of unbeaten 5-0 teams. Now, this game was originally supposed to be played in Week 4, but it got postponed this week. Both teams, they had some devastating season-ending injuries. For the Steelers, losing linebacker Devin Bush for the season. For the Titans, losing left tackle Taylor Lewan for the season. So this is going to have a huge effect for both teams, not only in this game, but moving forward. Because losing Taylor Lewan for the Titans, it eliminates a potential blocker for Derrick Henry, who absolutely dominated last week. Over 200 rushing yards in that matchup against the Texans. For the Steelers, losing linebacker Devin Bush really is going to fill a huge void. It's, it's a huge void for the Steelers' defense, especially in stopping the run, which the Steelers, they have one of the best off, one of the best defenses in the league. And new and upcoming star Chase Claypool has really stepped up in these last couple of games. For the Titans, I know I've said for weeks that they look like an imposter undefeated team. Well, I think they get the reality check this week as I think Pittsburgh moves to 6-0. and The Titans, they've had too many close calls for me to consider them an elite team. And I know they dominated the Bills, but the Bills are on a two-game losing streak right now. So I'm going to pick the Steelers in this matchup. I think that they're going to be able to really contain Derrick Henry, hold him to less than 100 yards rushing. I think the Steelers will get the win. Although I am interested to see A.J. Brown versus Minka Fitzpatrick in that matchup. I think that's going to be one of the areas where the game will be decided. And I think Minka Fitzpatrick is going to hold his own in that matchup. I'm going to pick the Steelers to win. Next, we have the Panthers and the Saints. Michael Thomas set to return this week after missing the Monday Night Football game a couple weeks ago for disciplinary actions. And for the Panthers... Looking to bounce back from the loss of the Bears last week. It is uncertain whether or not Chris McCaffrey is going to come back. The timeline is still uncertain at this point. But Mike Davis is really stepping up in the Panthers running game. And Robbie Anderson stepping up in the Panthers passing game. Although really a subpar performance considering the Panthers were on a bit of a winning streak. However, the Saints are coming off a bye. And I think... That the Saints are going to come out. I think they're going to dominate this matchup. Especially with Michael Thomas coming back into the Saints offense. I think that's going to make the Saints offense a lot more better. Especially with one of the top receivers in the league returning to your lineup. And you have Alvin Kamara just completely dominating. Becoming a one-man show for the Saints offense in Michael Thomas's absence. I'm going to pick the Saints in this matchup. Next we have the Bills and the Jets. And to tell you the truth, I think there's really nothing much to this matchup. The Jets still looking for their first win of the season, while the Bills are looking to bounce back from their two-game losing streak to the Titans and the Chiefs. Honestly, really not bad teams to have a two-game losing streak against. And what better way to 
start a new streak than to play the worst team in the league, a team that is looking for their first win of the year. And ultimately, I think it will happen. I think with Josh Allen coming off a season low in passing yards, in fact, the worst game the Bills have played this season, I would say. They really struggled stopping the run of Clyde edwards Lair last week. And I think if the Jets want to win this game, I think you got to assert the running game. Don't be afraid to really start running the football against this Bills defense, knowing that the Bills had a hard time stopping the run last week against the Chiefs. But I am going to pick the Bills to win this week, though. I just think the Jets, they're just going to be the Jets. So I'm going to pick Buffalo to end their two-game losing streak. Next, we have the Cowboys and the football team in Washington. Now, the football team in Washington, I felt like they beat themselves last week against the Giants. This was a game that the football team could have won, but I think Ron Rivera's coaching really cost them this one. Meanwhile, for the Cowboys, last week against the Cardinals, just completely didn't show up offensively. I think it's only a matter of time until, well, it, I'll say this, though, for the Cowboys. If the Cowboys want to do anything this season, knowing they're in the NFC East, knowing they're in the worst division in the league, if they want to go anywhere, they have got to trade for a quarterback at the trade deadline. Because right now, I don't think Andy Dalton is cutting it so far. In fact, to say he's not cutting it would be an understatement. Although another option could be to actually sign Colin Kaepernick, but we all know that Jerry Jones... We know that Jerry Jones doesn't have the guts to sign Colin Kaepernick. In fact, Jerry Jones doesn't have the guts to do anything to improve the Cowboys team. He put all of his eggs in the Dak Prescott basket, and look where it's at. Nothing. Completely blown out by the Cardinals in your own stadium, and you barely beat the Giants. Well, I'm going to pick the Washington football team to win this one. I think they're out for redemption after last week. So I'm going to pick the football team to beat the Cowboys. Ultimately, this season is just going to go from bad to worse for the Cowboys. Unless they make a trade of the trade deadline to get a quarterback. Because right now, any Dalton is not cutting it whatsoever. Next, we have the Packers and the Texans. And I think this matchup, I think it could be an underrated matchup this week. Despite the lopsided records, the Packers' defense isn't really that good. And with the Texans, I think Deshaun Watson can keep this Texans team in the ball game from start to finish, especially with Will Fuller becoming wide receiver one. Brandon Cooks is starting to step it up in the passing game, especially with how bad the Packers were last week offensively. I think the Texans, I think they could actually pull off the upset in this matchup. But the truth is, I just can't see it. I mean, I think it'd be surprising if the Packers were to play really horribly two weeks in a row. Especially with Devontae Adams returning to the lineup. I really think this could this is honestly I think it's gonna be a I think it's gonna be a shootout. I'm gonna say it's gonna be in the high thirties. I'm gonna say thirty eight to thirty four that the Packers win this one. I think it's gonna be one of those games where Aaron Rodgers is gonna come back from behind, let lead a two minute drive throw the game-winning touchdown to Devontae Adams with probably about maybe 40-something seconds left. So I'll pick the Packers to bounce back. But I think the Texans, they're going to really challenge the Packers in this game. Because the Texans, they took the Titans to overtime. In fact, they should have won that game against the Titans. But they gave it away at the end. Bad coach and decision by Romeo Cornell to go for the two-point conversion. So I'm going to pick Green Bay to win this matchup. Next, we have the Seahawks and the Cardinals. The Seahawks coming off of a bye, and the Cardinals coming off a huge win against the Cowboys on the road. They dominated the game from start to finish. That defense really dominated against those Cowboys. Russell Wilson, right now, to me, is the favorite for MVP. Kyler Murray, if he were to really go off in these last in this last half of the season, I think he could compete for MVP, really challenge. But right now, I think it's about the Cardinals battling for a playoff spot. Because the NFC West, it's up for grabs between the Seahawks, the Cardinals, even the Rams. I even say maybe the 49ers, if they were to step it up on offense, despite losing so much on defense, they really still have a shot 
at really getting into the playoffs with the expanded playoffs this year. And the Seahawks defense really isn't that good of a defense at all. In fact, it is one of the worst pass defenses in the National Football League. And when you have receivers for the Cardinals like DeAndre Hopkins, Christian Kirk, even Larry Fitzgerald, despite statistically not really being effective these last couple of years. I think this stirs trouble for the Seahawks. I know they're coming off a bye this week. I know the Cardinals are going to be on way shorter rest than the Seahawks. I think the Cardinals, they're, I think they pull off the upset in this matchup. I think the Seahawks defense, it's only a matter of time until their defense really costs them a game. Just think about it. They should have lost to the Vikings last week. Well, really two weeks ago they should have lost to the Vikings. The Vikings just kicked that field goal. The Seahawks lose that game. They had a close call against the Dolphins. I think it's only a matter of time. I think the Cardinals pull off this upset. I just think this Cardinals team, at least offensively, is going to be too explosive for the Seahawks defense to stop. Even if Russell Wilson has the capability of winning the game by himself. I know there's talented receivers on the other end with Tyler Lockett, DK Metcalf. But the Cardinals defense, at least, they're showing some signs of confidence. Especially after a game last week. I know it's against a backup quarterback. But performances like that could really be a huge confidence booster for a defense. So I'm going to pick the Cardinals to pull off this upset against the Seahawks. Giving the Seahawks their first loss of the season. Next, we have the Chiefs and the Broncos. The Broncos pulled off a fantastic upset against the Patriots last week, 18-12, to while the Chiefs, they dominated in the running game last week against the Bills. And the Chiefs also signed Le'Veon Bell. So the rich just keep getting richer in the National Football League. Are the Chiefs becoming the new New England Patriots? That's, that is what it's looking like. For the Chiefs, I think you got to assert your passing from this one, especially with Denver having a young secondary. I think you got to exploit those matchups with Tyreek Hill, Travis Kelsey. So you've got to set up those matchups. Clyde Edwards Lair, he had a fantastic game last week because he felt like he needed to prove himself, especially with Le'Veon Bell coming into this offense. I think this Chiefs offense is going to be almost unstoppable. However, the Broncos, they seem to compete really close with the Chiefs. When the game is in Denver. And I think this game could be no different. I just, with Drew Locke coming back into the lineup, I think the Broncos offense is going to improve a little bit. But unfortunately, they're going up against the Chiefs offense. So I think the Chiefs win this game by 14 points. Next, we have the 49ers and the Patriots. The Patriots are looking to bounce back after last week's loss against the Broncos. While the 49ers, they have some newly found confidence after pulling off an upset against the Rams last week. Jimmy Garoppolo facing the Patriots for the first time ever since he was traded by the Patriots to the 49ers in exchange for a draft pick. So I think this is going to be... I think it's going to be a good game, actually. I think the 49ers will keep this game close. Patriots' defense, they're still good defensively, but their offense, it did seem to struggle last week. But I think the Patriots' offense will come back to form because Cam Newton coming back into the offense after missing a couple of games. Well, he only really missed one game. But I think the offense is going to kind of get back to form where it, where it got to earlier in the season. So I'm going to pick New England to win this matchup, but I think the 49ers, they will keep this game close despite having some, despite being banged up on defense, having Nick Bosa and Solomon Thomas out for the season, and despite Raheem Moster possibly getting sent to the IR, but I think Jarrett McKinnon will step up. I think Jeff Wilson will step up. But I think the Patriots will still win this matchup. Next, we have the Jaguars and the Los Angeles Chargers. The Chargers coming off their bye week this week, which really wasn't planned, but the NFL had to adapt to their schedule this season. And for the Jaguars, they are officially entering the race for Trevor Lawrence. Could the Jaguars be replacing the Falcons as the spot for the race for Trevor Lawrence, a quarterback out of Clemson? Now for the Chargers. Honestly, this Chargers team could easily have 
well, despite their record showing, they have lost all of their games this season by one possession. So the Chargers are probably a handful of things away in all of their losses from being undefeated. And this is with Justin Herbert, a rookie at quarterback. And with Keenan Allen suffering a back injury a couple of weeks ago, it's really uncertain if he'll be back in time for this game. But I think he will probably play in this one. I would say probably questionable. Really not sure on that. But they have other receivers. They've got Mike Williams, who has stepped up in the passing game in these last couple of games. Also, a running game of Joshua Kelly and Justin Jackson, while Austin Eckler is still on the IR. I think of the Chargers, they can pull some wins together. By the time Austin Eckler comes back from the IR, this Chargers team, I think they're still, I think they're still in the race for the playoffs. And even if they don't, the future looks really bright for the Chargers, especially if Justin Herbert keeps playing the way that he is. And for the Jaguars, Gardner Minch on the other side at quarterback. Honestly, the passing game was a lot better. Well, the offense is better when DJ Chark is in the lineup. But I still think the Chargers are going to win this one. I think they're coming off a bye. Really motivated to get a win here. And I am going to pick the Chargers to win this game. And by the way, Justin Herbert will get his first win as an NFL quarterback. Next, we have the Buccaneers and the Raiders. The Buccaneers since week one looks like a much better offense. But unfortunately, the Buccaneers, they, have, they haven't really seemed to have their full weaponry of wide receivers. Because it seems like every other week, it's either Chris Godwin's out or Mike Evans is out. Or one of them is seeing limited action. And I think once the Buccaneers, when they get their full complement of wide receivers, their full complement of offensive weapons, I think the Buccaneers are going to be a team to watch out for. I think the Buccaneers, with this kind of a team, they could be one of the favorites to represent the NFC in the Super Bowl. And if you think about it, Super Bowl 55 is in their home stadium. And for the Raiders, they are... They're doing pretty decent. They've beaten the Saints and the Chiefs this season. So can they pull off another upset against one of the top teams in the league in the Tampa Bay Buccaneers? The truth is, I don't think so. Last week, the Buccaneers, they dominated the Green Bay Packers, even their first loss of the season. And Rob Gronkowski got his first touchdown as a Buccaneer. And it was only a matter of time until that chemistry started working together. Because originally, Bruce Arians doesn't really use much of tight ends. Tight ends are more used for blocking. That's kind of what Rob Gronkowski was originally kind of brought in for, was to kind of build some blockers for the running game of Ronald Jones, Leonard Fournette. But now that Rob Gronkowski's in the mix in this Buccaneers offense, it's just another weapon to worry about for opposing defenses. I think the Buccaneers, I think they're going to dominate this game pretty handily. I'm going to say the Buccaneers win this game by at least 17 points. I think it's going to be a really ugly game for the Raiders. The Buccaneers, they're playing at a whole other level despite losing a game to the Bears on Thursday Night Football a couple weeks ago. I think the Buccaneers still look like one of the be better teams in the league, especially if they can get their full complement of wide receivers healthy. If you can get Chris Godwin and Mike Evans to play together, absolute domination for teams for this team moving forward. And finally, we have the Monday Night Football game. This week, Monday Night Football features the Bears and the Rams. The Rams look, are totally going to come off an abysmal performance last week against the 49ers. All the Bears, Nick Foles is giving the Bears good performances week in and week out. It's just the Bears are looking like a much better team with Nick Foles under center than Mitch Trubisky. And honestly, I would say that Nick Foles taking over as the starting quarterback for the Bears. I think that's looking like the move of the season. I mean, despite the Bears being 2-0, and going into the Falcons in Week 3, Trubisky being benched early, being down by 16 points, Nick Foles coming in, really not only saved the Bears that game, but I think it saved the season for the Bears. I think if Nick Foles, if he does average, I think maybe Mitch Trubisky still 
would still be the quarterback. So I think if Nick Foles doesn't lead that comeback, they probably still start Trubisky, and who knows if they would have still gone to Foles yet. And the Rams secondary, could they shut down the wide receivers and Allen Robinson? Could they shut down Anthony Miller? I think that's going to be a huge testament of this matchup. While the Bears running game of David Montgomery, who is taking over as the lead back with Tariq Cohen out for the season. So he's getting a lot more touches in every game. And David Montgomery, he's another reason why the Bears are doing so well. Because when you give David Montgomery so many touches, the Bears offense is a lot better. And I'm going to pick Chicago in this game. The Bears defense, I think they're going to shut down the Rams receivers and Cooper Cup, Robert Woods. I think the Bears will win this game. I think it's going to be a defensive battle in this one. I'm going to say the Bears win this one 20-17. So those are my picks for Week 7 of the NFL season. For review, I like the Eagles, Falcons, Browns, Steelers, Saints, Bills, football team in Washington, Green Bay, Cardinals, Chiefs, Patriots, Chargers, Buccaneers, and Bears this week. Like, share, and subscribe. Comment your picks down below. And I will talk to you next time.